she asked me then to put both hands straight out and she asked me to take one hand and pull up my left breast and pull up my right breast. And then she had me turn back around and then she mimicked what she wanted me to do. Bring your hands together, bend down real low as in a squat position and cough. And she was right there looking the whole time. going on guys rdap dan here federal prison time consulting hope you guys are having an amazing day today we're going to be talking a little bit about felicity huffman what her prison journey for 14 days is going to be like we have the amazing holly coleman with us who is a prison consultant and she specializes in focusing on what it's like for women getting ready to mitigate their sentences and also what a female can do to shorten the amount of time that she might be looking at but before we jump into this take a quick moment go ahead and subscribe to my channel all you need to do is tap that bell in the top right hand corner of your screen. Make sure you turn on your notifications. Also, don't forget to text the word YouTube to 76626. That will put you on our notification text message list. So welcome, Holly. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back, Dan. So Holly, I know you've been on the show a couple times and we've talked all about your story. We've talked about other issues. Just kind of give a little recap of who you are, what you do, and kind of how you got into this industry. Okay, so my name is Holly Coleman. Um, I served a 21-month sentence for one count of wire fraud. I was uh, an executive assistant at Hewlett Packard, got caught up in a bribery scandal, and um, ended up in federal prison. <laughs> so during the time leading up to that point, I was doing research again. When you're going through something like this, you're trying to find the most information as you can. You're scared to death. And I really couldn't find, at the time, um, uh, information on women going to prison and what it was going to be like, what I was going to experience, not only that, but what I was going through with my attorney and the whole process, the pre-sentence, the <laughs> plea agreement. So once I completed my sentence, um, I realized that other women would come to me and ask me about my experience. And I think it's really important to understand that most people make a very small mistake. Most women that go to low level camps are nonviolent first time offenders and they need help. So it's to help guide them and let them know that you can be successful and that you can again, have a life after this. I think that's kind of the point here is so many people that are going through this right now, they really feel like it's the end of the world, life is over. These are just regular everyday people. And today we're talking about somebody that's not so regular. We're talking about Felicity Huffman, who was just sentenced to 14 days a couple days ago. And it looks like she's probably right. possibly going to have to do a little bit of federal prison time. So we kind of want to talk about that because a lot of people see that she received a 14 day sentence and they see themselves receiving two, three, four or five years or even more. So there's a little bit of bitterness. They're upset. They're right. thinking, well, it's because she's rich and famous and she's white. Right. Why she got such a short sentence. Uh, what is your take on this? Does it have more to do with the guideline range or does it have more to do with who she is getting a favor basically from the government? No. So people need to understand, and what I try and do is help educate, um, you really have to understand the federal system is different than state, and you have to know that there are federal sentencing guidelines, and that when her plea agreement was put together, um, she fell in the lower end, meaning the lower end of the guidelines, and uh, basically zone A, uh, first time, again, nonviolent, no criminal history, and so her plea agreement was zero to six months. And I think um, you have a copy of her plea agreement that you're going to, to post. And with that, that means there is guidance that, yeah, I mean, it can go as low. She got 14 days. I know people are outraged, but again, it all boils down to you have to understand the federal system and those sentencing guidelines. And it comes down to the monetary loss in this. And I think, oh, yeah. the, what, what I was her loss in this? What did she actually out of pocket? 
Right. It was a $15,000 um, total amount. So again, real low, whereas, you know, mine was $1 million and mindset, you know, I fell higher. So, I mean, there was no doubt that I was not going to go to prison. I wasn't going to go. Yeah. So. So Felicity Huffman, she's going to go to prison. Now her right. life is living in the fast lane. It's a glamorous life. Uh, her husband, William H. Macy, many of you from Fargo or Shameless on Showtime. So if you don't know who William H. Macy is, that's her husband. And he's also a A-list actor. I imagine their lifestyle is pretty rich and famous right now. Do you think that is probably the biggest play on her mind is she has no idea oh, what she's going right. to be dealing with? Everybody has that, that vision of what federal prison is going to be like. And we see it on movies. And so, yeah, it's weighing heavily, I'm sure. Life is going to change for the two weeks that she knows it. Um, I know that her that the recommendation that they put in and requested was for her to go to Dublin, California. And I've, you know, been reading and been getting, you know, a lot of comments saying that's, you know, again, camp cushy cupcake and no federal prison camp is cushy cupcake period. No. So what I'm curious though, is that Victorville where I served my time, um, which is just right outside of LA, it's in the high desert. That would be a location that would be closer and that I'm, wondering if the Bureau of Prisons won't be sending her there. But again, getting back to the statement, her life will change. And yeah, she's going to be going into a very austere <laughs> type of world. <laughs> I mean, prison is, is definitely culture shock for anybody going for their first time. Uh, it's right. clearly not going to be the end of the world for her, but right now no. she's living in the moment. So why do you think, so Victorville is where you did your time. Uh, that's right. much closer to where she lives. But I think you were saying Victorville's, you were getting some inside scoop that it's at capacity potentially, and, or even, even above is, capacity. It's above capacity from what I understand. So it will be interesting again to see what the Bureau of Prisons does, whether they grant the request to Dublin um, or if they find room for her in Victorville. So, so we're, we're going to talk a little bit. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about more about what her her prison experience will entail but before we get to that uh so we've got felicity huffman we've also have you know aunt becky everybody knows aunt becky from from full right. house um lori lockman what do you think the big difference is between felicity uh, other than the loss amount felicity huffman what did she do right versus what uh what Aunt Becky has done right or wrong. What's what's the big difference between the two right now? So I would I do have to commend Felicity Huffman for the fact that she did take acceptance of responsibility. And that is one thing again that prosecutors look at. And the sooner that you um, work again, either accept the plea agreement and show that you are accepting the responsibility of it. it. It's huge. Her statement was proper. She's been very, you know, contrite and humbled when she did her statement. I believe her. Um, I believe that she was in pain uh, and it shows and she would like to make it better. But <laughs> so these are the things. Acceptance of responsibility is a huge thing in the federal system. Uh, Lori Laughlin had pled not guilty. They came back with more charges. Uh, obviously, there's a conspiracy tag in there as well, a charge. Uh, she's not doing the right things. Uh, I really am surprised that her attorneys are leading her down the trial here because fact is, yeah, we all know that when you take it to trial, and if you lose, which 99% of the time happens, um, you know, she's going to get jail time and, poss and probably more. What type of time do you think she's potentially looking at if she's found guilty? A, her loss amount is higher. I think she's up around, upwards around, what, a half a million, right? Right, half a mil. So I believe her level is uh, 18 right now. So that falls into the category of, I believe, what was it, 27 to 32 months. I don't think she'll, she'll get that per se, but she is going to get some time. Yes, considerably more than Felicity Huffman. And also in Felicity Huffman's case, even though she was looking at zero to six months, because she pled, she mm -hmm. took early acceptance responsibility and she really 
I mean, look, everybody knows, anybody that watches from the outside in knows that everybody's guilty in this. Uh, was there some maybe being a little not paying attention or just getting comfortable because this is how it's always been done over decades and decades. You pay to get your kid into school. Sure. But being naive is not really an excuse to break the law. No. And these just happen to be the people they got caught. So the fact that Lori Loughlin has not taken a plea agreement, I think she's even openly admitted at this point that he regrets not taking the plea because now there's no longer a plea on the table for her. Um, Right. She probably would have been looking around a similar sentence to what uh, Felicity Huffman received, maybe a little bit longer, maybe, you know, 60 days to 90 days. Just a little, yeah. But now she's looking at a a real prison sentence for somebody that's, again, living that glamorous lifestyle. Uh, Again, I think you're dead on, you know, commending Felicity for how she really handled this from the beginning and owning up, taking responsibility. I have to imagine that Lori Loughlin's attorneys probably advised her that, hey, you should probably take this plea deal. And like so many individuals that are in denial and just can't face the fact of even dealing with the thought of prison, live in this false fantasy world, even more so when you're somebody that's used to getting your way by just throwing money at a problem. And as we all know, there is no throwing an amount of money at the feds to make it go away. No, zero. Yeah, you can't pay your way out of it. <laughs> um, also, I think for your viewers also need to know when you're offered this play agreement, you only have a specified time. So the pressure is really on to understand and know that you have to move quickly because it's not going to be there for very long. <laughs> So Lori Laughlin again, I just think she she just made a very she bad mistake and it's she's gonna pay for it. And when she is found guilty, which more than likely she will be if she goes to trial, when she goes to trial, it's highly right. unlikely that the government's gonna recommend the low end of the guidelines being no. you push them no. to actually go the extra limit and drag more resource and energy and waste of time going through this just to get the same. They don't like, that. They don't like it, right. So they it's going to be like interesting it. to watch that. So, yeah. so, ba- so back yeah. to Felicity. Um, you were just on right. Inside Edition a couple of days ago. They right. had a really neat little interview. And there's actually a link in the description of this video. This interview that you did with Inside Edition, they asked you a lot of questions about uh, Felicity Huffman. And one of the things that you spoke about was her job, what she might do right. for work in prison. And I had a question because I just remember from my own, my own prison experience. Do you think there's an opportunity that she might not actually work just due to the fact that prior to getting a job, she's got to go through like A&O? And I sat in prison for almost three weeks before they even brought me through any process to assign me a, to sign me a job. Is there a chance she might sit there and not actually work at all? So I want to clarify that. Yeah. Usually when you're your 30 days administ- A&O, admissions and orientation status, and you're not assigned a job until you go complete that. Um, however, when you are on ANO status, they, meaning the BOP, your unit team, can send you to work on jobs. And my experience with my first 30 days, I didn't sit there for 30 days. They had me cleaning the, the unit. They had me working in the kitchen. They had me working outside on the complex. Um, so yes, it, de- it just depends on, so she could work, could be asked to work. Um, but typically won't be assigned a job since she won't be there long enough. So maybe she'll work, maybe she won't. I'm going to go with the thought of, I don't see her being given <laughs> her. a job just because everyone's afraid of getting that press and being like, I, I think everyone's yeah. really going to cater to her. And I'm sure her fears right now are, oh my God, the, the guards are going to come down on me. The inmates are going to hate me. I'm going to be mm-hmm. ripped to shreds when I walk in there. Um, Mm -hmm. I've also read all of these crazy statements that people think she's going to have like this private suite and cable television. So so tell people what's it like for for a celebrity that goes into prison? We've all been to prison with celebrities. Do they get, I mean, they might get a little bit of different treatment, but what's, what's the real deal? The real deal is they're going to be treated just like anybody else. They're going to go through the intake process. They're going to go do, you know, the squat and cough just like anybody else. They're going to be assigned bedding, uh, dressed out in uniform. Um, they're going to, you know, get a pack and pin number if there's, uh, they're going to get assigned, you know, a bed. 
Uh, if she goes to Victorville, I can tell you based on, since it sounds like it's almost at capacity, right now they're putting people in a multi-purpose room. I don't think uh, they'll assign her necessarily, if she's at Victorville, a, a roommate, meaning it's a two-man type of cinder block style um, cell is what you want to say. Like, like a cubicle? Um, as a cubicle. Okay. And, uh, you know, she's going to be the first day will be the most traumatic, I think, for her because again, you're learning counts, you're you're listening to people barking at you, you're you're going through things that are kind of dehumanizing, and they are, and the aesthetics, like I said, you know, are 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 horrible, and Especially your first taste or your from. first, yeah. So it it's it will be a big shock to the system, yeah. Unless you're prepared for it, you you know, and she really needs to understand what's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big shock for her. How do you think she'll be viewed and treated by, uh, by other inmates? You know, it's always that 50, 50 thing where you're going to have women who just don't really care. They're just trying to get through their own particular sentence and don't really, you know, pay attention to that. She's got such a short sentence. A lot of them, you know, the other are the celebrity factor possible, you know, what could I benefit, you know, by befriending her and kind of showing her around and maybe something good will come out of it for me. And you've got, of course, then the other part of the celebrity is, you know, their fans. So, but for the officer standpoint, no. <laughs> and, you know, my experience, I kind of lean towards that the guards can be, uh, a little excessive in their punitive aspect, meaning yelling a little bit more. And I don't see them being super kind to her. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of similar. Whenever you're a TV celebrity star, just like uh, Michael Sorrentino, the, the Jersey Shore mm -hmm. situation, um, right. I'm sure he had a lot of the same concerns going in. And now that he's, he's out, and we had a couple clients that were actually where he was that were basically saying he was just living the high life in there. Everybody catered to him from the correctional officers to other inmates. And he had a good outgoing attitude. He didn't have like hockey. I'm better than everybody. So I think everybody did get a good, receive a really good vibe from him while he was in prison. Uh, if Felicity Huffman can kind of give off that demeanor and not come off snooty or better than, I think she'll do okay. This actually could be, a good experience and it might not even be that bad for her career if she actually Correct. To her advantage. Correct. I know everybody's talking about you know the after part you know writing a book getting a movie blah 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 um I always take this as personal this is about your personal growth this is what you do with it and so yeah I think it's an opportunity that yeah you know, and the type of person that she appears to be specifically even you know taking acceptance that I see her yeah growing from this experience. Remember, this isn't over for her. Just after the incarceration piece, she still has supervised release. She has one year of reporting into a probation officer. So it's, this isn't, it doesn't just end with her 14 day sentence. I don't think mm -hmm. she'll have a big problem on supervised release. Most people no. are gonna keep their nose no. down. And her fine is what, $20,000, which she's, I'm sure is already paid. Um, it, I, her fine has been already paid. Um, I believe it was 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 240 like hours. Community. How many hours? 40? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 240. Well, no, no, no. 240. 240. <laughs> well, hopefully she's got some awesome charity. Look, this is a great experience for her to bring yeah. awareness to a, let's just call it what it is. It's a pretty corrupt system. Um, I don't think prison is called for for what she did i feel a fine or maybe even a, a more excessive of a fine for who she is and what she can afford would have would have made more sense um, but at the same time they're trying to send a message that even though this has been done probably the judge that sentenced her to prison probably at some point paid money to get their child into uh, a school that gives a certain status there symbol yeah. So it's, it's easy to point the finger, but everybody wants the best for their families and their children. And when it's been done like this for decades after decades, it becomes, it becomes almost like, oh, this is what everybody does. You're not even thinking about it. So not dismissing what she did. I mean, she did no. commit a crime, if you want to call it a crime. But at the end of the day, there's way worse things that are happening where we're, where we're locking people up for next to nothing. Uh, Agreed. John Mayer, yeah. somebody came out and just spoke publicly about this. 
I forgot who it was John Mayer or somebody came out basically John, said, you know where who was it was yeah. it John Mayer John Legend I think John Legend John, Le John yeah. Legend wrong John yeah um, but yeah that and that's the truth you know hearing some of these celebrities come out it's easy for the regular person for us for us common folk to say oh they deserve this they deserve that and really what that is is that's just us being angry and pissed off that they live the lifestyle that we all want um, but She's got family. She's got kids. This is, it's no different when you're dealing with, with the, the mental side of this and what she's right. where coming from and where she's going to have to now go for 14 days. Um, and honestly, 14 days, I don't care who you are. When you've never been anywhere before, 14 days going to prison, it's, it's a mental, a mental breakdown in your head until you get there. So don't forget, guys, if you want to book a consultation with Holly, if you have a loved one that's heading off to prison or getting ready to go to prison and you really want a, a female's perspective on what it was like for them, Holly's contact information is in the description of this video. Her email is holly, H-O-L-L-I, at federalprisontime.com. And you're more than welcome to book up a consultation with Holly, spend a little time with her on the phone, and see how she might be able to help you and your family. Uh, so... What's the food going to be like for Felicity Huffman? What is, is you think oh. that's going to be a challenge for her? <laughs> She's going to be shocked at this um, food, as we know. Yeah, heavily carb loaded. Um, it, it, you know, the Federal Bureau of Prisons feeds people on what is $1.87 a day. It's, it's just unbelievable. And so a lot of the food, you know, has been sent in warehouses for years. It comes over. Um, yeah, it's, it's not nutritious there. You really, really have to pay attention on what to eat. You get one piece of fruit only at Victorville and that's in the morning and you can't take it out of the dining hall, obviously any food out of the dining hall. So you have to consume it there. Um, you look forward to a piece of fruit, but everything else is just, I did not find it. The women do the best that they can to try and make it edible, <laughs> but I didn't find it very good. No. I saw in the interview you did with Inside Edition, you actually stated, and I remember hearing this, I never saw it firsthand, but you stated that a lot of the packaging on the food says not for human consumption. Indeed it did. Yes. Some boxes that we would receive, and it literally was stamped, and it did state not for human consumption. That's when you want to have a camera <laughs> to take a picture of this because it's just a, <laughs> unbelievable. You're going, and you're being served this, and they know it, <laughs> and they bought it. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. And this so, is the food that's given yeah, in like mainline or chow hall, whatever you term you want to use for it. Now, when we go to commissary items, do you think mm -hmm. Felicity Huffman's gonna get in on any of the prison spreads where she might get together with a couple of the females in there that are making, whether it's be burritos, pizzas, cheesecakes, whatever other <laughs> little dishes you can make up? Other, uh, do you think she might get involved? Make in what that you know, if she's there for two weeks, she's certainly gonna see it, but I don't know if she'll get necessarily involved in it she's only going to have an opportunity to shop what twice once a week and <laughs> but she'll definitely see it and then she may be invited she may be invited over to have you know try out a little bit of what's I mean, been made i know how i am if when i was in prison whenever i saw anybody new come in that had just got there that seemed like a down-to-earth type of a person have a decent personality i know when me and my group were always cooking i would go over and offer something, whether it be a slice of the pizza we made or a burrito or some of the cheesecake or whatever, nachos. I have a feeling there's going to be people, even if it's just for the pure, I'm starstruck, so. are going to go offer her something. So she might at very least get to taste some of the, <laughs> and some of these prison meals were so, uh, the, the, the ingenuity that was behind it and the creativity, it was like, they made this from that. And it was amazing. From this, I know. Yeah, it is amazing. I wrote so many different recipes down. <laughs> They're always will be up here, actually, too. Uh, do you, but do yeah. you ever make any of your prison so, recipes? I have to admit, I've made two things. I have done cheesecake, <laughs> prison cheesecake, and I did a tuna boat a with tuna pork rice. We might have to have an episode cooking with Holly and, and see what kind of uh, prison prison spreads Holly can put <laughs> on there. 
So now that you explained the food situation, we know what that's going to be like. And you've also explained the sleeping arrangements. If she's at Victorville, it's a cubicle style, very similar to like you've ever watched Orange and New Black. Not that bad, not that intrusive. It doesn't have bars, no gates, no slamming doors. And if she goes to Dublin, I believe Dublin is, they're like private rooms that are two-man yeah. rooms. Um, right. Not like a hotel suite where you get like no. and all this stuff. But, and again, she may not have a roommate in this situation either, but nonetheless, she's going to be sleeping in the same environment as everybody else. So no favoritism. Right. Uh, bathroom, showers. Is she going to be in some kind of a big open shower where she's naked in front of everybody? Or is she going to have some level of privacy when she's showering and using the toilet? The one, the one thing nice, if, if she goes to Victorville, there was like a little, I call it the antechamber. Um, you step in and it's got just like a door and a bathroom, but it's higher. It's up to here, up to, and so you can change your clothes and then there you can step into the shower, which is further back. So there is modicum of, you know, privacy there. Nobody can see you. The bathrooms all have stall doors on them. Um, and so, yeah, no one's really going to see her change clothes, only if she would change in her cubicle area, but very doubtful. Yeah, there is some privacy. That's about it. <laughs> and I imagine the fear going through her mind is everything we just said. She's probably imagining showering, and being naked constantly and being dirty, maybe getting one shower a week. You know, in county jail, you're lucky if you can shower once or twice a week. That's very Right, right. But I was, I could take a shower five, six times a day if I wanted to. Very nice. I was in this shoe. I only got out an hour a day. That's because so. you were a bad, bad woman, Holly. You decided to, <laughs> you decided to talk trash about the system while you were in it. Um, I was too scared to do that. I waited till I got out. But yeah, you <laughs> spent some time in the but shoe. Yeah. If you guys want to see the interview with Holly, where she talks all about her prison experience, uh, I will link that into this video as well, and you can actually hear Holly's story and why she was in the shoe. Don't tell them. Make them I, I won't say anything, but um, yeah. yeah, this all goes through their head. You know, what the first day, what the bathrooms are like, you know, what am I going to eat? Um, you know, what are the other female inmates? How are they going to treat me? How are the guards going to treat me? Um, it's just, it goes constantly, constantly, as we know, <laughs> until you're there. I, I imagine the most realistic fear she has that's going to actually happen will be when she first gets there, the strip search, because the strip search is going to be very, it's demeaning, degrading. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got no choice because that's the only way they can protect or try to protect from a contraband sneaking in at some level of, even though it gets in a million other ways. But what's, what's a strip search actually like? What do they, what do they do to a female uh, when they strip search? For and, female? And, and, and so what, strip search? Sure. Okay, so when I was in Victorville, um, after I did my fingerprinting and filled out some paperwork, uh, the female officer put a brown sheet on the floor in the bathroom and told me to go ahead and remove my clothes. And she pointed exactly where to put my clothes. And I'm standing there completely naked. She first asked me to bend over and shake my head, shake my hair out, run my hands through and then shake it out. Um, she looked in each ear. She looked up my nose. She told me to open my mouth, stick out my tongue, lift my tongue. Um, she asked me then to put both hands straight out, just like a T. And then she asked me to take one hand and pull up my left breast then pull up my right breast underneath. Just take a look underneath your armpits. She then had me turn around to my backside and she asked me to pick up my left foot, look at the bottom of my foot bottom of my right foot. And then she had me turn back around and then she mimicked what she wanted me to do regarding the squat and cough. Bring your hands together, bend down real low as in a squat position and cough. And she was right there looking the whole time and did it and that was done. And then she proceeded then to hand me um, my prison, my first day. When you go to Victorville, they don't put you in a pant uniform. You are given a smock dress. It literally looks like a big A-line dress with big straps that come around, big buttons right here, pockets. You wear a t-shirt underneath. You, of course, are given underwear. You have little socks on, and you're given the campus booties that we've seen, like, oh, or just the new black. Um, they've been washed a million times, so... 
you know, they're all falling apart. You don't have boots yet at Victorville the first day, but then that's how you're dressed out right after the squat and cough. So that's probably going to be the worst of her prison experience is that first 24 hours. It's always, you know, and it's ever, always on everybody's mind. On It goes so quickly, though. I'm like, don't let it traumatize you too much. It's meant to be demeaning. It's meant to do this. They're looking for contraband. You know, it's, I have not had any other women tell me that I was with that they've ever had an officer make fun of their appearance. What is some positive advice? If, you were, if, if Felicity Huffman were on the phone with you right now and she said, hey, Holly, I'm going, what is, what is some advice you can give me to help me get through this without losing my mind? Go in, stay low, keep your mouth shut, um, be pleasant. The other is, you know, ask the questions. You're there for 14 days. We just talked about what's going to happen with the squat and cough. Um, educate really kind of what the process is, is going to be that whole first day. And really kind of just for those then, the additional 13 days, just to get through it. And again, be pleasant. Don't, <laughs> don't make a spectacle of yourself. You know, be kind to other people who speak to you. Uh, listen to the guards. Don't antagonize them. And you'll get through it. Well, Holly, I really okay. appreciate you joining us. I know you're actually at the law firm you work with right now. So I appreciate you taking a few minutes out to chat with us. Uh, guys, uh, remember again, if you want to book a consultation with Holly or myself, uh, our contact information is in the description of this video. Holly is simply at H-O-L-L-I at federalprisontime.com. Uh, Holly, I really appreciate you joining Thank us you. today and taking this time out. And Felicity Huffman, if you happen to watch this video, this is some great insight for you. Before you go to federal prison, you're going to get through this. It's one day at a time. Yeah. People helping people, community is method. I will see you guys soon.